My name is Dr. David Bull. I am a medical doctor. I'm also a television presenter. I've presented programs such as Watchdog. Uh, also, of course, Most Haunted live on Living TV. The reason that I went to see Colin was I have done a lot of work with paranormal programs. I started off being incredibly sceptical and I believe the proof of the pudding is in the eating, so I decided to see what Colin had to say for himself. The connection I feel that is trying to take place, this is not so much a family link for you. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, one of the common expressions we use is they pass before their time. But, you know, I do actually feel as though this was um, a young person who had the scheme of things been other than what they were, would have had a lot longer on, you know, on this side of life. So I don't feel as though they've actually been passed over very long. I was very careful in the reading not to try and give away anything and initially I thought it might be one of two people. I thought it might possibly have been my cousin who died at a very early age or my friend Mark. I feel with this um, gentleman that's connecting with me that leading up to his passing he had commented or complained that he was getting pain or aching around the gland area underneath his chin, you know, mm -hmm. the throat glands. And then I feel that there was something like, like a high fever or um, a bout of pneumonia or a really bad virus and he recovered from that. I, I really feel until sort of this, the effects of this illness struck, he had been incredibly energetic um, very lively, both, both in character and, and, uh, and personality and the way he exerted himself in life. You can tell that I was quite shocked because my breathing starts to increase. It was just too close. There was no doubt in my mind that it was Mark. And Mark had a condition called cystic fibrosis, which is a genetic condition. Um, he died at the age of 31 um, and he died of a high temperature and pneumonia. He um, was one of the rudest and naughtiest people I've ever met in my life. Over the years, we became very good friends. Um, he had obviously had cystic fibrosis, but he never believed he was ill. And what we used to do was that we would do a double act and we would go to lots of charity functions uh, to raise money to fund a cure for this hideous disease. And I would start off by saying, these are the facts about cystic fibrosis. This is why I'm here. This is why we need the money. And he, with his little devilish eyes and charm, would stand there knowing exactly what he was doing. And he would say, I have cystic fibrosis. Most people with cystic fibrosis will die before they reach the age of, age of 30. I have cystic fibrosis and I'm 30. If there wasn't a dry eye in the house. And I really do get this feeling from him of wanting to admit to you that he, he went through those final days, months, weeks of his life almost in denial that there was actually anything wrong with him. And yet in his heart of hearts he knew there was something seriously wrong with him. Now Mark um, sort of had, a, had a, a spate where he would be quite well and then really sick and then really well and really sick. And the problem is it's kind of a stepwise progression and he, he never once believed that he was ill. Um, and I remember really, really well, I was travelling up to film for Watchdog and I was driving up the motorway and I knew he wasn't very well. And I suddenly had to stop because I knew that I would never see him again. And um, I pulled into a, I don't know why I thought that, I just pulled into a service station and, and wrote a letter to him which I faxed to his home. And I think, if I'm right, it's one of the last things he kind of read and I didn't see him again. So. I knew he was sicker than he ever told me. I do really get this feeling with this guy. Is you either really, really liked him or you loathed and detested him. There was, there was no in-between with him. You either adored him or you, you couldn't stand him. And I think he knew that about himself. Can you tell me his name? Can you describe him? 
No, the only feeling that I'm getting, I get no name. Mm -hmm. The only feeling I get from it, and I don't know whether it's physically or, or mentally, I would describe him as attractive. Mm -hmm. But I don't know whether I mean physically or, or mentally he was an attractive sure. person. I just know that there was something about him that he was attractive. He would captivate people. Mm. He would walk into a room and hold court. Yeah, oh, completely. Yeah. Um, and I think that that is really what, depending on your, your, your disposition, you either would have adored him or would have despised him. Absolutely. Mark was someone who would polarise people because he was so committed and passionate about certain things. He'd tell you if he thought you were talking rubbish. And that doesn't always work well with people. It, they can get quite upset. So I think that's absolutely right. That, you know, people did love him and people really had times when they thought, enough, I can't, I can't listen to this anymore. So yeah, I think that was completely on the spot. And I really do get this feeling that he did a lot for other people. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't think of any other way of saying this. I feel from him he had to dress it up so that it didn't actually look as though he was doing it mm -hmm. to benefit other people. Um, he wouldn't want it to have been be seen to be a do-gooder or um, a charitable person. Hmm. So he had to dress it up. I think if anybody had actually said to him, oh, you're a you know, very good man, and, you know, very charitable and everything, he would have been acutely embarrassed yeah, by that. Completely. Um, so he had to dress the whole thing up. Yep. And even as I'm sort of talking about this feeling that I have from him, I can feel from him as we're talking. He does not like me talking about him like this. No. Well, Mark worked for a charity, he worked for the Cystic Fibrosis Trust. Um, he would go out of his way to help anyone with cystic fibrosis, no matter what. But he would do it with a veneer of, oh, let them get on with it on their own. Because he, he hated people to, to think that he was so caring, I think, in many ways. And it was part of his own coping mechanism. By playing down the disease, by saying, actually, it's not a big problem, he could deal with it himself by saying, well, I've got it and it's not a big problem. If he'd gone the other way and said, oh, it's terrible, they really need help, I've got to help them, then, of course, he's admitting that he needs help. And that's how he did it. Um, and, and it was incredibly powerful. And people loved him for it. <laughs> What, what is this joke? What is it? Why is he joking about this? They're saying you were the brains and I was the beauty. <laughs> and he just said to me, he was just made this statement. He said, "You tell him he will know what I mean by he was the brains and I was the beauty." <laughs> well, obviously, no. I, I think. Well, no. I think that's a really harsh comment. Um, we were a great double act. We combined brains and beauty. Let's leave it there.